This is Dave and Sarah. And they will take your questions. <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple hours sleep last night, so that was fantastic, but I'm definitely tired. What has this world been for you been like over the past 48, 72 hours? Going through everything that's coming at you. Maybe yeah, yeah I, it's, it's a lot. I, there's not even a time where I've had to sit down and kind of take it all in. It's just kind of one to the next, but uh, it's definitely been a lot of fun. What do you enjoy most about this experience? Uh, just kind of going to meet a bunch of new people and how great they are and how positive everybody is about the whole situation. Uh, very receptive. It's, it's fantastic. Did you ever figure yourself to be the type of person, no one imagines they're going to get caught in a 40 hour whirlwind, but <laughs> did you ever picture yourself as the type who liked to hobnob or enjoy it or be well versed at this sort of thing? Yeah, it's definitely not me. I'm more of like a, a quiet guy. Usually they say the goalies are the quiet guys, right? So I kind of fit that stereotype. I'm I'm fairly quiet. I'm not really that outgoing, but uh, in a situation like this, you, you learn to be, I guess. Is there a other a hard question for you, if I may? Sure. Um, what is, uh, uh, did you expect the, to get national you know, recognition this, to be picked up nationally like this? No, not at all, actually. When I put my gear on, I went on the ice. Uh, my only thought was, uh, let's go out there and save some pucks. And uh, after that, it kind of took off. When I got off the ice, it hasn't stopped since I, I got off the ice. But. It's, it's still it's a good time for sure. And um, has anybody approached you about uh, movie or publishing rights? Oh, there's there's like emails and stuff going on, but. Uh, I have my agent call you. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> yeah. Are there literally like emails and stuff going on about that? Yeah, there's people sending emails and just asking stuff, but I haven't really obviously had a chance to even think about that. Well, books and movies. Yeah, not right. Not really sure exactly what it, what it is, but. There's definitely people emailing and stuff, but I have so many messages all the time, and, and the, the poor guys here have, have the same thing. They've had a lot of messages, and they're taking great care of me, So, uh, but we're just kind of going from one step to the next. Do you have an agent? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not yet. So can you take me through, like, do you get off the ice? I think I found, I'm not even sure the exact time, but I think I found out that the morning, uh, morning of the skate, I think, or maybe the night before. I'm not really sure. It's been, <laughs> I don't even know the time right now, but uh, it's been a lot for sure. But the, uh, the guys from the Hurricanes have taken such good care of me. The like, pace came with me to New York and walked me around the whole place. And he was fantastic the whole time. So um, if it wasn't for him, I, I think I would have been lost in New York for sure. Sarah, you had a colorful tweet your husband. <laughs> <laughs> it was put into the game. Yes. From your perspective, how is this craziness unfolding? Um, it, it's been unreal. That tweet was when uh, Mrazek actually went down. Um, <laughs> everybody thought it was after the two goals were scored, but it was before that. <laughs> Hey, can, is he the same guy you married still? <laughs> yeah, just a little less uh, communication between the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> Which at times is okay, but yeah. Hey, well, how has your family been responding to this? I'm sure your family and friends have been like seeing you on national television, hearing mm. you on the radio. Yeah, my phone has been stopped, uh, and I haven't really got a lot of time to uh, talk to family and friends. Uh, yesterday on the Today Show was really much, you know, the first time I kind of talked to my mom afterwards, and they, they shocked me with that one, and it was really cool to talk to her. And I actually do have a couple of my friends that are coming down to the game tonight. They're actually driving down. Uh, they're going to come to the game so with uh, with their families, so it's going to be pretty cool to have them here, too. Yeah, I know the, the goal of every transplant patient is mm -hmm. to live a normal life afterwards. Mm -hmm. And there were, you know, I'm sure your first concern was, can I, can I continue playing hockey? Right. Um, what kind of precautions did you have to go through in clearances? Did you have to? Get? I know kidney is usually in the front. It is, yeah. It's not the best place to yeah. be to have it for pucks coming at. You. Yeah. So the doctors at St. Mike's Hospital in Toronto, we went over it. Um, actually, even before that, uh, when I found out that I, I was going to need a transplant and I had to go through dialysis, um, I had a fistula put in my arm, and usually they put it higher up on your bicep, so. They actually put it on my wrist because they knew I would be a little bit more uh, protected right there. So they did that, and then when I had my transplant, uh, they put it in the front, and they wanted to make sure that I was well protected, obviously, before I went out and took some shots. But as a goalie, you're, you're pretty good in that spot. So I've, I've been lucky and uh, kind of not been hit in that area. So uh, the doctors have 
like full full clearance for me to go out and do whatever I wanted in the last 15, almost 16 years. I, I have had no issues and I've been able to get out there and do what I want. Does everyone know you're on steroids? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm not on steroids at all. <laughs> no? I'd be in better shape if I was, I think. No, none, none. I actually took, uh, it was prednisone for the first uh, for, for the first year and I stopped. So, yeah, yeah, I can't say that I even take medication that way, right? I just take my normal medication in the morning and at night and I'm good to go. So. Yeah, I think uh, the Today Show was really cool. Uh, but all of the cast there, they came up to me and kind of right away they just gave me a big hug and say, this is awesome, this is so cool to meet you. And so for me, you know, just kind of a normal guy and have them come to me and say, you know, it's great what you're doing and uh, it's awesome. And then Stephen Colbert last night was, was really cool too. Uh, he really embraced it and we had a lot of fun just in the rehearsals and everything. He, he was such a great guy. So uh, all the interviews are a lot of fun. Everyone asks me something different. Uh, so it's always a different angle, and it always brings back another memory from the game, which is it was fantastic for me because sometimes in all of this you feel like you've kind of lost perspective on the actual game and what happened there. So um, for me to get all these questions, it's really cool. Dave, I want to go back to that game. When you gave up those first two goals, obviously there were some nerves going on and whatnot, right. but what happened from that point forward for those remaining eight shots that you saved? Mm -hmm. What was the difference between those eight shots and those first two? Yeah, the first two were, were definitely tough because I'm on the ice with the Leafs guys quite often, so I know a lot of the players. And I think the first one I kind of um, was kind of guessing where he was going to go based on you know where he normally scores on me. So <laughs> that's not his normal spot. Uh, so he kind of he fooled me a little bit there. And then the second one I I didn't really have much of a, a chance on. Um, I just kind of looked up at the scoreboard and I, I just said to myself, like, we need to make a save here. You can't go out and embarrass yourself like this. So, and then a couple of players come to me and they say, you know, don't worry about it. Just, you know, let in 10 goals. We don't care. You know, just go out there, have a lot of fun with it. Um, and so I, I tried to calm down a little bit. And in between the second and third, uh, the coach and the players, they all said, you know, just have fun. Don't worry about it. We've got you. So I, and I said to them, I promise I'll be better in the third. You know, score one more goal. And I'll be ready to go in the third, and I'll try to hold it down. So they played unreal in front of me. Uh, they didn't really give up a lot. Um, it was fantastic to just be there and watch how good they really are. How much of a relief was it for you when they scored those first two goals coming out of the third? Oh, game? yeah. Yeah, every time I saw the puck in the other end, I'm like, please go in. Please go in. I need this. So uh, they did it. So it was great. Obviously, you know your job is the emergency backup. So there's two things going on. There's only one way for you to get into the game. Mm -hmm. Realistically, every night when you show up as a back emergency backup, what are you really hoping happens? Are you hoping the scenario happens one day for you, or are you thinking yeah. you two goalies get hurt? No, I. The first couple of times I had to go get dressed, and, you know, you're kind of unsure if you if you want to handle it or if you can't handle it. And even though I'm on the ice all the time with them, it's going to be a different scenario. But then after the, I've dressed, that was the fourth time that I dressed, and you know, I, we talked about it, and I said it would be great if I could actually get in there. You know, I, I I'm confident in myself that I could go in there and you know not kind of make a fool of myself, and I could and I could play. Um, so I was excited to get in. I was waiting for an opportunity to go, and I said if it ever happens again, I don't think I'll be as nervous. I'll, I'd be a little bit more confident in, in knowing what I'm up, up against in an actual game situation. How many, uh, how many times? Yeah, it's the fourth time I've dressed, and I've been there for the last three years. So, uh, yeah, I didn't do every single one of them this year because uh, I'm coaching a hockey team as well, and I didn't really have a time to practice in the morning and go to my work and then go to the Leaf game and coach. So it was a lot for me. I think I've done about 25 or 30 games maybe this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I did every single game last year, and I did probably 25 or so the year before that. So it's been a lot. Where are you usually sitting? We stand. We stand right at the top corner every time. I love the perspective. Of, you see everything happening. What section? 317. There's a 317 number on the actual rink there. We stand right underneath it every single game. You stand in every game. Every time, yeah. Oh, are you, like, isn't that not great for your legs? Yeah, <laughs> there's some days your feet are sore for sure, but uh, I like it. I, I don't mind at all. I find in Toronto, if you're in the, in the upper deck area, the seats are kind of squishy, So and people are in and out the whole time. So if you're standing, you can kind of move around and... and Kind of keep your legs. You stand together every game. Yeah. That's kind of the deal, right? You get yeah. free tickets to. Yeah. 
right? Right. And that's mostly what you thought you'd ever get out of it. That's, yeah, pretty much. I thought, you know, we'll get, uh, basically, my friends call it, you've got season tickets to go watch the Leafs, right? So. What other three times did you dress? Uh, this year when uh, Freddie Anderson got hurt with his neck, which is uh, maybe three weeks ago or so. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then Bernier went down in, uh, with Detroit in uh -huh. Toronto this year. And then last year, I think Crawford got sick in the middle of a game for Chicago. So uh, no, they had jerseys there, but he didn't get to keep them. No, I actually, I dressed for Charlotte on the first uh, in Toronto when I, I practiced with the Marlies in the morning and the goalie was uh, sick, so I ended up dressing for Charlotte, which was kind of cool. Were you ever actually on the bench? In those uh, well, I was on the bench, but where they put their goalie at that arena, it's right by the Zamboni door, for so. Charlotte. Yeah, for Charlotte. So you had any chuckles? Did you ever actually go, you were in the back? Right? Yeah, I was in the back. Uh, with the Leafs, I kind of stayed, they know me pretty well. I didn't actually go into the the room itself. I just kind of stayed in the room just off of the dressing room. Okay. To see a guy like Andre Sveshnikov tweet at you, like, well done, my brother. Mm -hmm. and you know you're a Leafs fan. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to have someone as good a player as him you know, congratulate you? And what does this Carolina Hurricanes program now mean to you? It was so cool. They, they came to me after, and they waited as I was talking to somebody. And, and they just walked over and said, hey, can we get our picture with you? And that, to me, that was super cool to have them just uh, acknowledge me like that. And, and the whole team, every single guy, when they came in a afterwards, or even during the intermission, or even during the game, uh, just being so positive and, and so cool. And I think it, it's a testament to hockey in general. Beside me and screamed, that's my husband. <laughs> 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 Which just, <laughs> it was like a wave, then everybody in our area knew they were coming up, and people had brought me beers and everything to try to calm me down. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, it was... Uh, it was a crazy experience. I said, I think I've gone through every single emotion from fear to I was so proud. I was so excited. Those two goals went in and the guys, everybody was cheering. And they're like, sorry, sorry. And I'm like, no, it's OK. <laughs> I'm like, you'll be fine. Did you stay in that spot for the whole um, For most of the period, um, I went down and sat a little bit closer. Um, one of the ushers there, she's always great to us. So she called me on down and said, come sit down here beside me. And, I sat down for the first time, which was really, really good. But um, I didn't want to. I didn't want to leave um, for a chance of uh, or fear of missing something. How did, how did you get downstairs? Like, the, like, were you able to get downstairs after the game? So after like, when he gets. No, oh, no, when he gets called down um, for regularly, like when he has to go down, um, we have a little meeting area right outside the players' doors that I just go and I meet him at, and they had arranged that I went in the back way, and he took me into the, the dressing room and that so afterwards. When, when did you see him? And, and without getting too personal, what was that for both of you? What was that moment like when you first saw each other? Well, it was about, I guess, an hour and a little bit after the game, and he had said, we were trying to text message, and it just, I knew he was chaotic at that time. Um, and then they, they brought me around and he came walking down the, the tunnel from the dressing room and it was the best feeling to see his smile and I think it was like the longest, hardest hug that we've, yeah. we've had. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I was still cherry face. My face was still red from being on the ice and kind of being uh, sweating and then everything else kind of going through afterwards. I, I didn't know, but when I saw her, it was, it was great. It was just a big relief to see her and kind of just see how happy she was and it was fantastic. No, I changed out by that time. I, yeah. No shower yet? Yeah, I had a shower. Okay. I had a shower and got everything all packed up. Yeah. And I actually just brought her to the change room because I had a few things I had to carry out and I couldn't carry by myself. So she came and <laughs> she was carrying my pads <laughs> out to the truck and stuff like that. So she was helping me out. So you got your jersey. What else did you work for other than that? Yeah, I, yeah, I got my jersey. And actually, uh, they came with all this, this new uh, gear yesterday to, to New York. So a couple of cool shirts and hats and, and stuff like that. Uh, they took my stick yesterday, or the, after the game, they put it in the Hall of Fame because I, I broke a record there, which was, which was cool. I didn't expect that, and uh, that was really good. And obviously, got that that bottle from Roddy was fantastic. And Reimer gave me a, a stick. It says, uh, "Thanks for holding the fort." You know, so that was really cool too uh, for him to come over and, and be like that to me. So it was awesome. Sure, sure. As you go into the future, and I don't know your feelings about Uh, no, not really. I think um, you know I'll be going back to to work on Thursday morning, and 
um, back in the net on uh, well in the stands on Saturday night with, as an emergency goal for Leafs, and that's pretty much as far as I've even looked ahead, really. Well, no, so uh, St. Michael's Foundation in Toronto, uh, where I had my kidney transplant, I am doing a few speaking things, which was set up before this. And they've actually contacted me since to do another one, but uh, it was just something that's really close to me, obviously, having a transplant. I want to make sure that everyone else knows, you know, just because you have a kidney transplant or something like that, uh, it's not the end of the world. Um, and for me, that's really, really huge. Um, obviously, if I didn't have my transplant, I wouldn't be here, and the doctors and the medication and all the technology that goes into it. Um, I know a lot of people fall into maybe even a depressed state or so on. Um, and I, I fell into that too when I had my kidney transplant. I thought, you know, no hockey, what am I going to go into? This is, you know, kind of a shock to me. Um, and for me to be able to speak to other people and say, you know, it's kind of like a little phase. There's always someone there to help you. There's always someone there that's going to support you. And there's always a way for you to get to where you want to be and even beyond where you want to be. Uh, for me, that's huge. And if I can speak to anybody and, and help turn someone around or give them some kind of positive motivation, uh, I'm all for it.